All right, so today we're gonna to be building a racing drone. I bought one, I've just been kind of scared to build it. So Steve's here to help me with soldering and stuff like that. Shouldn't be too bad. I have the camera up top so you can see everything looking down. We're gonna be following Mr. Steely's video on YouTube. He did a 4S build and that's what we're doing today. So this is the entire kit that I got from blacksheep.com or team black sheep and we'll just go with that. First things we're doing the, um, it's like the flight controller or something I think. Grab solder maybe we'll switch yep. seats just for shits and gigs because i want to know how to do the soldering and stuff like that so pop it like it's hot soldering gun is at 850 ish um and i'm just gonna pre put the solder on there i'm just straight breathing that in it like takes a while to heat up for some reason touch it up Oh, is that the first one? Oh, shit. Is that the red goes out? Oh, yeah, it's left side and show this. I honestly think it's just because uh, it's mostly wire. There's not really a lot of flux on there. It seems like it's on there pretty good. Yeah, it's probably on there. There's enough on there. It's just a matter of, like, getting, getting it the solder there. soft. That's what I'm scared about for the... Uh, little ones like when it goes to oh that's, that's money <laughs> i wish the other one looked like that i don't even know if i want to mess with it though i'll add more on top it already felt pretty solid that's like really strong it's not there's no way that's gonna go anywhere perfect well first part down which was honestly the hardest so far but yeah yeah it went on there really good yeah well um uh, this is the front because of these little cutouts oh okay i see and he said put a zip tie in this one right here. All right, so I have small zip tie that fish through that. I think that upper camera heated up and turned off for just like a little bit, so. Um, what Steve's got right now uh, from the upper shot, you can hold it like right here if you want to. I'm doing what what Mr. Steely said was uh, Mr. Steely aluminum right or steel aluminum steel steel yep. so steel so aluminum, aluminum steel. Aluminum bolt will go in that little hole right there. Those little guys go facing down. That's gonna be so hard to see. It's such a tiny little deal but the rough part goes facing down and holds it in place. Yeah. This stuff does feel like good quality though. Yeah. Sure. It looks like it's like even cut pretty good too and stuff. Oh yeah. All the holes seem to line up really well. So far everything's been good. Like the exact amount for everything. Um, they included a lot of this stuff that we probably won't even see extras. Like it'll be down. So if you end up getting a kit and doing the same thing or whatever, um, just pay attention to not losing these screws because it, it is probably the exact amount of stuff and you don't want to lose them. So. Yeah, it'd be nice if they threw around like one or two extra. It would be sad if tighten all these down and uh, that's not the right way. But I think it's the right way. So. You tighten from the bottom. Yeah. I'm saying like the orientation of the nuts. That looks like it's pretty set in there. Yeah. Once you can't see the little rough part of it. So right now I'm just uh, setting these down close to the, the frame. So we're going to tighten it kind of like a car, like he said.
All right, those all look pretty set. That carbon fiber looks super sweet. This and his video is kind of down low like that for the zip tie at the back. So right here, we're putting double-sided sticky tape under the KISS PDP with the OSD just to hold it into place. So what Steve did was he put um, double-sided sticky tape. You can kind of see it a little bit on all four corners. And that's what that uh, chip is going to set down on. It's going to press against and it'll stay. Goes around that probably, yeah, so it doesn't like rip it out. Yeah, he zip ties that down pretty tight. Nice. Sick. I pretty think at some point he puts actually like a little uh, piece of foam over that. I think it's this one actually. Yep. But we'll see what the next step is. Says he's gonna set the frame aside. I'm not gonna put any hardware on it yet. So next he breaks out this motor. Does that come with each one, I think? I only saw one pack of it. So my guess is if there's four motors, then we need four symmetrical pieces, yeah? Probably. Did that come in just like a little baggie? That little baggie, yeah. Right, okay. I'm sure they gave us like the right size. Yep, this looks like exactly what he's using. Yep. So then if we need four pieces. You cut that in half and then you cut the other two in half. Cut it in half. That should work, yeah. Yep. I have a... Uh... Actually, you, you can cut that. Uh, I'm gonna grab the strippers, wire strippers. So he pre-solders those, I'm assuming? Only one side. Only that, probably this side. He's gonna, you're gonna cut it to length. Oh, those, yeah, yeah, he does all those, the wires though. He oh. pre-tins one side of these. I think this is where the three, since there's, this is where the tiny little wires go. Oops. The uh, little ones, mm -hmm. three of those or whatever. It's not gonna be working to my advantage there. So this portion with the ESDs, we are pre-tinning all the little boards for the motors and also cutting all the small wires to length and pre-tinning those as well. Just getting them prepped and ready to go to put them on the OSD board. Dude, that was, we're getting to be pro. Getting to be a pro. Oh yeah. Look at that. That was quick too. Yeah, that was perfect. All right, we're back. Uh, Steve's gone. We kind of got late and this has taken a long time. I didn't assume that I was gonna have this done in like two hours. It's probably gonna take, since this is my first one, it's gonna take me a while. So um, we're gonna just gonna continue on to where we left off last night and hopefully it goes uh, really good. So far we have um, 
the main chip on here. I forget what it's called. I'm a newbie, so easy. Easy on the new guy. This is all set up so far. Um, right now I'm working on the, I believe these are like ECDs or something, or something like that, where um, you attach the motors to. So I'm attaching these motors to this side. I have to go through each um, each motor and I'm gonna kind of pre-solder each one. And then I will attach them to the board. And then we're gonna take this, put the heat shrink over it. And then we're going to attach the motor and that to the arms and then go from there. So let's get to it. I'm gonna start trimming these guys up. So far this has been uh, pretty fun to me. I work at Boeing, so I, um, I'm a wire assembler at Boeing. So this has been pretty interesting. Honestly, I've never soldered like efficiently before. I've just done it a few times and I don't really, I don't even think I knew what I was doing. But after doing this for a little bit, I'm getting a little better at it. It's not too bad. Sorry if you hear the, the fan noise. I'm just making sure I don't have, I'm not breathing any of the soldering fumes. Just want to fly it already. I'm waiting for my um, goggles to come in the mail. Um, some batteries and stuff too. I just wanted to get started on the drone part because this is the fun part. I'm sure in the future when I crash them and have to fix them and stuff, it's not going to be fun anymore. But since this is my first one, this will be a, uh, it's been pretty fun so far. So I'm just going to take that off gonna pre-solder all of these put a little bit of solder on the tip solder gun has been my worst enemy so far this is kind of a cheap one so it just it's making my life difficult right now A lot of solder right there. Woo. All right, all four of them are good to go. So this one has some strands, just chilling. All right, from there, we're gonna start mounting them to these chips, which might it to be a little difficult for me I guess I don't know how this is gonna go we will find out probably gonna look not so clean compared to uh, most people's, but it's the first one, so. All right. All the motors are done. Those cool off for a second. Um, actually, we can start by this last one. This one's probably cooled down already. Uh, right now, I'm sliding over the heat shrink for these ECDs. I think that's what they're called. I could be completely wrong because I forget. There we go. 
All right, I'm gonna shrink these down with my gun. And right here, when you're shrinking down the heat shrink on those ESCs, you want to rotate them as you're heating it up so it doesn't damage the ESCs in any way. All shrinked up and ready to party. So what he did was to steely. I watched it a little bit longer so we can just keep continuing with this. He would take these motors and mount them. Right here, I'm just trimming all the wires to length and stripping them to mount them to the board. <sighs> what happened there was I, when I went to strip the wires, it pulled the insulation completely off and I had to put it back on somehow without damaging anything or having to replace the wires. So be careful when you strip your wires. Pretend these, still rolling, still talking, here we go. Also right here, just make sure when you're putting your wires onto the board and soldering to the board that positives going to positive and negatives are going to negative. And then the three wires in the middle for the motors. Oh my God. <laughs> my solder game is not strong. That is for sure. That's like legit the sketchy part. It's like kind of nerve wracking a little bit. You're like, I'm gonna I'm gonna So these little motors, came with uh, these little skirts, pants is what he calls them. They have the hardware in them. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this on top of here so I don't lose that for now. Keep these two together and then I'll just kinda work my way down the line. Also to note, funny thing about these ESCs is before you mount them to the board, make sure you slide the pants over them because right here, I am. these motors have no pants on them. So I had to remove all the motors and put them back on the board after I put the pants on. Just putting those in temporary for now. Because I'm gonna have to cut, kind of push these back a little bit so I have a little bit of wiggle room. What happened on that last one is when I went to trim some of this off with the strippers, it pulled off the whole jacket. And that was kind of scary. Cause I have a feeling if I'm not careful, it'll do it again. So I need to make sure that doesn't happen again. We could probably slide this one down. Just don't want to break the wires off. So I'm not gonna mess with it too much. I'm just gonna leave it as is. I'm gonna start trimming these up. My solder doesn't look the best, but we're getting there slowly. We interrupt this program to bring you a special report. Remember to put your damn pants on your motors.
All right, I think we are uh, done. That's what it looks like. Finally, my solder isn't the greatest. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take these off again, put double-sided sticky tape on the bottom of this, cut one of the wings down here. And we're gonna place that over the top and electrical tape it. So when these are going ham, this isn't bend down if you hit something and cut the wires or something or mess up the chip. So that is what we're gonna be doing next. And um, let's do it. So far, it's been fun and kind of stressful. So you're gonna see quite a few outfit changes during this because um, it's taken me a long time. I realized I needed some more double-sided st sticky tape to put under these e ECUs for the um, the props or for the, the motors. I think that's what these are called. Dot, like I said, I'm new to this, so I don't know everything. So you're probably gonna see me rattling off random things <laughs> thinking that I know stuff, but I don't. So yeah, so now the next thing that we're gonna do is you're gonna notice that I'm gonna be watching his video, Mr. Steely's video here on the table from above. And um, what we're gonna do next is cut these props so that they're covering these chips, ECUs. I don't know if we wanna call them that, but sure, let's call them that. So they're gonna cover them so when these props are on here and they bend down, they won't damage anything. So that's what we're gonna do next. I'm gonna see what he does, where he cuts it. I just wanna follow it to a T and um, yeah. You're gonna see me pause a lot, especially when I'm actually watching the video, skipping the parts where I'm paying attention and then just getting to the building aspect of it. So hopefully this video isn't two hours long. like. I'm gonna be recording. So I'm just cutting the props now. I'm just cutting them towards the base. I don't wanna cut myself. But I wanna show, I don't wanna launch this halfway across the room either, so. Just like that. I'm gonna end up having to get that and that's gonna suck. Double side sticky tape, boy! Oh, I don't think I needed to cut this because I already did that. Um, I think he's putting the double side sticky tape under those uh, computer little computer chips so that they don't move very much. God, that's so bad. Good thing I'm not using those ones. I'm just cutting for no reason. What I did is I kind of just took a razor blade and slid those underneath and without having to take these off. ESC. And there we have it. We have our little protectors sucks that we had to cut a prop up but all right looks like we're snipping wires this is for the camera so this will be interesting i get so shaky when i start doing stuff like this tedious three prong i think that's the one he's talking about I'm just going to set these off to the side. My solder is on. Right here, I'm twisting the wires. You want to make sure you're twisting all your wires too because it cuts down the interference with the currents that are running through them. So, yeah, do that.
All right, I'm gonna probably tin these. I think he's talking about this. I'm gonna have to rewind it. plug that in he's talking about doing this make sure you have the right connector on the right side but I plugged in all the way and I don't really want to break something trying to get it back out so I'm gonna just leave it in make sure these are all twisted up like he said and I'll just work around it This is not the best way to be doing this. I just don't have the proper strippers for this apparently. So hopefully, I don't really want to cut off more than I have to. So we won't. Wish I wasn't so shaky. It was really hard soldering all these four right here, it's for the camera. Kind of a pain, I was super shaky. I don't know if you weren't able to see that, but yep, all right, let's get back to it. So this is the foam he's talking about in the video. It's a windshield for this little mic right here. It's so you can hear what's happening up there. He's basically saying you wanna cut it in half. This kit comes with this kit comes with this foam, so you want to just cut it in half and uh, stick it on to that little microphone there. And it acts as a windshield. So currently I'm putting in these uh, standoffs here um, for the flight controller, I believe. If that's correct. They're the black aluminum screws, the longer ones. Which I've noticed with these screws, it seemed kind of crooked a little bit, like almost like the threads on the inside were kind of done weird. Like they look crooked as All right, got my standoffs in there. I'm assuming um, we're gonna be working with this next, which is the flight controller, and that probably goes right on top. You can't really see it right now, but if I open this up, these 
we'll go on here. From what I believe, oh, flight controller, yeah. So what he wanted us to do is to file this on all the outside corners so it will fit on this, on these nylon rods. I could probably file it a little bit more so I'm not forcing it on there. So weird filing this expensive piece. <laughs> That ghetto life, Mr. Steely. That ghetto life, brother. As I'm filing this on a piece of electrical tape, or a roll of electrical tape. All right, that should fit pretty good, I would hope. Money. That fits perfect. Okay. That is complete. It says to go to impulserc.com to check which side these white and black wires get plugged into. Because if you plug them in backwards, it will fry not only this flight controller, it would fly all these ESCs. And you don't want that. White is going to SER1. Kiss V2, white cable goes to SER1. The three with holes. So the receiver pins are the three with holes. These three with the holes right here, I need a 10. So I'm gonna 10 those. Take that burnt solder off. That's why I do not like soldering sometimes because I am not the best at it still. <sighs> Where's that razor blade at? Did I really lose the razor blade? Oh, razor blade! <laughs> Alright, so now we just need to hold. It's upside down. Ports up. Like you said. All right, looks like we're just setting this off to the side. And we're gonna build the camera. Run can Swift 2 with a 2.5 millimeter lens. Taking these two screws out on the back.
And we're gonna screw this back plate back on. camera back plate on now. Just gotta put these little L's on. So my uh, battery on my camera straight ahead died. Um, I wanted to show you what I was getting to before I noticed it died. Um, we're setting this up, so we're setting up the cam. What I did was I took off that back plate. I don't remember if that was in the video. Or also those little L-shaped pieces that go on the back of the run cam, you can kind of see right here. Or not. Took that off, put that carbon fiber plate on it, and then I put these brackets for the camera on the side. Um, like he said, put this at five notches down this screw and leave it loose and then this one goes to the back there's a u-shape right here um, this goes all the way to the back right here next to the camera same same thing on the other side five back and then on the back side of that you that you uh, insert whatever you want to call it then you want to insert in the back of the camera you want to insert these guys. The run cam comes with two of these blue and black wires. You want to make sure you have the FEMO one plugged in, not this one that I did. So make sure you do the other one. And then from this board, from the drone, you want to insert the ones where it's next to the mic on the right side. It's a three prong. It's a five prong on the camera, but it's a three prong cord, so connector. So you want to put that on the far left side of the camera. And that's uh, where we left off from there. So next is mounting this camera to the drone. And uh, yeah. Yep. All right, let's get to it. I really hope that this three prong went in there correctly. Since the camera shut off, I did uh, some more stuff to the drone with the flight controller and the Nano RX uh, with the antennas on it. And I'm gonna kind of explain what I did since then by just bringing it up here. So this is the Nano RX right here. What I did is I soldered all four of these wires in through the holes up underneath. So I went black, red, yellow, white, as you can kind of see on the bottom there. And this was soldered to the flight controller, which is right here. Um, if I can zoom in a little bit more, focus it. Black, red, and my solder's terrible, but black, red, oh, yellow. And then the white goes on this little five volt up here. It's a bigger plate right up, or sorry, it's a bigger plate right above, above the five volt right here. Uh, this red one. So the white one goes on the little bigger plate that's right above this guy. And then I ran them underneath the flight controller, out the side, out the back where the battery is at, battery line. And this is going to get taped to right here. It's going to just get electrical tape all the way around it. Tape it down. This is going to be out of the way. And then with the cam, I think, is where I left off. I soldered the camera to the board. And then um, I had to change out this blue wire because I put the wrong one on there first. I had to put the female one on there. There's a, there's a male and a male, but I, and I put that one on, but I didn't put the male and the female on there. So, And then now, um, this is where we're at. I'm going to tape this to the board. And then I'm assuming that from there we're going to start topping it off. I mounted the flight controller on here and um, I just used the aluminum bolts or nuts on these little nylon standoffs and I got them kind of snug but um, 
and there's that. So uh, let's finish up the rest. Oh, forgot about this. This is that antenna that comes with it. Um, I took the chip that was has the coax cable on it, um, hooked those two up, and I put some electrical tape around it, just like what he does in the video, just so the metal's not touching the carbon fiber for feedback. Um, with this coax cable, you're supposed to put it at a 90 and then zip tie around it so it doesn't move or rip out of there. And then um, it's still you're still able to see the lights next to this connector and stuff back over here on this. I took a razor blade to cut this button out right here as well. So you still can get to that button. Um, then we used his uh, wrap strap stuff. We wrap strapped through these ti two tiny little holes in the front and went around the antenna, I guess is what we're going to call it. And then another one through the big one right here with a zip tie as well on top. And then with the coax cable, we put 3M double-sided sticky tape underneath it with the red still on the top. And we did another one of these wrap straps. And then this is just chilling here now. And that's the top. I'm not sure where we're gonna go from here, but let's uh, continue the build. Let's do it. Um, first things first, I'm gonna tape this to um, the back here. I just need to find my tape. I'm gonna kind of cut a long piece Let's secure it to the center here. All right, got that taped on there. The Nano RX cable, and uh, we're gonna go from there. Little baggie right here of standoffs. We're gonna start with what he was doing in the back. I hope these are the right right ones to use. So far, I think that's how the standoffs are gonna go. Just like that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight standoffs there in the center. So we wanna make sure all these are on a flat side with this camera. All right, standoffs are on there. We're gonna have to zip tie this down. to this uh, standoff here. Even though there's a relief he said right here, you just, it's pretty crucial to do this as well on this spot. So that's what we're gonna do. Follow step by step. All right, well, you're gonna see another, uh, you're gonna see another uh, outfit change here. Uh, Cause I need to get some heat shrink for these antennas back here. But we're almost done. Almost done. Right? But we're almost done. So let's uh, do that clothing change since uh, it's gonna be a different day now. All right, new day, obviously. Outfit change, boom. So um, we where we left off was installing the antenna here on the back to be able to communicate with the um, crossfire I believe and uh, the next step from here what we're gonna do is um, do the heat shrink that he does so I currently have I'm gonna do red and black and um, I currently have two pieces once cut to, like he said in the video, 0.95 or 95 millimeters, and then once 85. And I have my two small zip ties. I'm actually gonna use these bigger ones because I can just cut it down, worst case. Um, and uh, yeah, let's go from there. Let's do it. So we are running this Panduit head like this where run this down over the antenna and what he said is to have this black antenna going off the top of the head down here like so I just want to 
double check. Yep. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to shrink this up now. I cut a little too much. It's a good thing I have some more. I shouldn't have cut it, to be completely honest. Let's uh, just use the black one for this. probably pretty good um, this is what he calls the immortal L so um, we're gonna continue the video and go from here Trying to grasp how this is on here. I don't know why I'm being so technical right now. Alright, I'm slipping this next heat shrink over that zip tie we just zip tied to this post here. Sure, he's gonna cut off this excess panduit zip tie panduit. Just don't want to get that filament. There's the antenna. All right, so the next thing that we're doing is we're gonna set everything up on the computer and um, I'm probably gonna turn the cameras off for this while I set everything up and maybe I'll do like a fast pace um, speed up run of following what he's doing and we'll get back to building the rest of it. And outfit change again. This has taken me a total of, I don't know, four days, four separate occasions of working on it. It just, it gets too late for me. I work during the day, so it gets too late for me. The video Mr. Seeley has is like two and a half hours long, three hours long, I think. And usually when you're watching a video step by step, it's like double or triple time, triple that if you're going step by step. So what we're doing now is we're going to start assembling the rest of it and putting the top on it. And then maybe we'll be able to do a flight test and check when we put the props on and everything. So uh, everything worked out. I put the PD PIDs on there, uh, Mr. Steely's PIDs, and I'll probably put those in my description. If you want to just download the text file and use it for your drone if you're building it, all you gotta do is when you're in that program, you go to restore in the bottom right after you connect to it. Basically select that file and it'll input all of those PIDs and everything for you. I'll also include his video on him talking about PIDs because I don't really want to get into it. I'm not like super knowledgeable with stuff like that. So I will leave that link for you to look at. All right. 
let's get to it all right so we're gonna make sure these are connected which obviously it is because we turned it on but we're gonna tuck this he said he's we're gonna tuck this under the FC here on the top um, just tuck it under there he said it'll probably honestly it'll probably move around and cause some dealios so I'm actually going to take it and put it on the other side with the other wires so it doesn't move as much when it's flying. It probably won't, but... And then we're going to snap this on the top. Not exactly sure how this is going to work. Not really like wanting to snap in there. Unless they're in there now. Okay, yeah, they're in there. Dope! We're getting close, dudes, my dudes. I take longer with stuff like this because I want to make sure I'm doing it right, especially since I put a lot of money into the time and research after work for a few weeks and the invested time into um, doing the simulator for a while, which I haven't flown it in a while. So before I fly it, I am definitely going to fly the sim for a little while, but we will do kind of a like really low to the ground test flight with this, just so I know it can lift off and um, everything works really well. But other than that, I'm pretty excited to practice with this thing and just get nasty with it. It's amazing that this little this little drone can just rip with the drone on top or a GoPro on top of it. Hopefully this 4S can handle like my Hero 7 on top of it because it would be kind of sad if it couldn't withstand the weight of a Hero 7 and it kind of made it fly weird. But I'm sure it'll be balanced out kind of with the batteries a little bit so we will see. Um, right now I'm putting the screws in for the top. We got all four of our screws in. Everything's in there. Antenna's off the back. Our good, the immortal L. All right. Honestly, I don't remember what this went to. And it might've been for this chip on the top, but I don't remember. All right, foam wedge. I'm going to tighten these down and make sure they're actually really tight or semi-tight because it is pretty sure plastic standoffs. I don't want to strip these, so I'm just making it getting to the point where they stop and then quarter turn, like he said, just to make it snug. <laughs> Little snug quarter turn. I'll have to buy like a field kit with some tools to take. Because I'm sure these get loose after flying them for a while. All right, next step is putting the GoPro pad on there, and that's what he's going to show us next. And I honestly don't know where I put that. That's rather upsetting. Where the hell is it? Son of Where the f are you at, baby boy? Is it at, dude? Consistently rolling over it right now, making it a pancake. Pancake. I honestly don't know what happened to it, my dudes. Oh, ha! <laughs> it was literally under the table. That's embarrassing. All right, I think he heats up the carbon and then he heats up the bottom of this and sticks it to it, if I remember correctly. All right. Line it up with the back of the screws. If it wasn't so shaky. And he said, just push. All 
I don't know if they sent any Velcro with this. I'll probably have to get some gel vel Velcro to put on the bottom of my GoPro. Which is kind of sad because I might have to do a different alternative than putting this foam on here for the GoPro. Because I like to use my GoPro for like fishing and stuff too. And I want to be able to put it in its little holder without the Velcro getting in the way. And I think that's not possible. So unless I can try to find one of those things. Maybe I might have an extra holder for the GoPro. I cut the bottom off of it and use that holder and put it on here with it, but that seems kind of dumb. I don't want to really do that. It's a lot of weight. Or it's just more weight added to the drone itself. But we have the foam on there. That's what it looks like. The GoPro is just going to sit right on top. Yeah, I do not remember this pack coming with Velcro, which kind of sucks. We're going to be doing this foam for the feet next, put on the bottoms. But on the strap thing, man, he has a strap that has like rubber on the inside. So when it's like warm, you warm it up with your fingers, it like, becomes like sticky and it holds the GoPro in there a lot better. I figured like with this pack, since this is the video of that build, it would have that same strap but that is one thing that is not in this so the straps were actually in the pack i just didn't see them on the floor that sucks all right let's do the feet i want to see how kind of big he makes them so he said he puts these right on the end here before the screws so that is what we'll do. All right. So those are on there. Probably should have cut it so they wouldn't cover the electrical. Some of them cover the electrical tape on the EC, ESCs. And I feel like if something happens and I got to replace one of those, I'll just probably cut that extra piece. See how it's kind of overlapping a little bit to the tape. That's not really a big worry. So that's there. You got the drone. Now it can chill. It's got beats on it so it doesn't scratch up all the screws. So this strap, he says he puts GoPro facing away from me. Um, the little strap here the on the left-hand side. And then between this, these standoffs and where we have the... Uh, the I'm gonna call it stretchy strap <laughs> um, <clears throat> between that and that I don't know why this tape is coming coming off don't do that this strap should hold this down just go through it my dog Starting to sound like Mr. Steely did. Just need a mustache. The Mr. Steely mustache. All right, so there's that. That's through. That's gonna wrap, wrap up over and do its thing for the battery, holding the battery in. And then he says he alternates how it sits. So I'm assuming this one, the clip sits on the right side and he said underneath the video transmitter so he's not putting any pressure on the video transmitter and then I'm gonna grab a battery that's been charged I'm not gonna plug it in don't get too excited but I'm just gonna let it chill off on the side I just want to see like the full setup build and what he's talking about in this section is he's saying, because well, he's putting the GoPro on it right now, right here on top, you want to put a, a square piece of Velcro. And we, I've already said this, but put the Velcro on the bottom of the GoPro. That goes on top here. And then his Gowie strap that has the sticky stuff, when it kind of warms up a little bit, it gets sticky. You put it, you strap it through over the top here. And then, um, where is this? 
No, it's definitely not. You go through there, this goes over the top and you kind of want to have it on the corner of the GoPro, the front corner to put pressure down. You don't want to put it flat on the top. You want to put it on the corner of the GoPro as it's facing up. So imagine the GoPro at an angle right here. You want to put it on that corner in the front. Then it just push, pushes pressure straight down. Rather so if you were to have it on the flat part, it wouldn't really be secured all that well. The only thing holding it in is that Velcro. So I need to get one of those straps. All right, so with the strap, I go over this back side here in the back. And he said to make it tight, but not too tight so the screws aren't digging into the battery. And I thought I moved this back a little bit. So, oh yeah, that's perfect. So that's on there. And then he said with this, he straps it over. And as he cinches it down, he loops back this. So when you plug it in, when you plug it in, it just goes straight down here and the cords are, cords are really tidy. So this would just plug in just like that and it'd be really tidy, everything's tight, it's not loose. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's all set and ready to rock. I just need to put my GoPro on there, put the props on, and uh, rip it, bud. But for now, um, let's test, like what he did is he plugged it in, um, engaged the props, and then moved it around to see if it reacted like it's supposed to. So I'll grab my control, my radio. Turn this Welcome baby on. OpenTX. Moment of truth. It really makes a lot of noise. I don't know if it's supposed to do that. So that's on. It's on my one that's got TBS all set up or whatever. Give it some time, let it connect. It's running, okay. So when I flip this switch, by the way, when I was setting all the PEIDs up and stuff, I did not know you need to have a like idle switch basically. I forget what you call it. It's very simple, it's just, I'm drawing a blank right now. You have to go into your controller and set basically an idle motor runner, or the motors are idle basically, like a Kind of like a kill switch i guess i would say you know like it's a starter the start switch you leave it on so you can fly you can kill it with that what the hell do they call it whatever i didn't know that so for it was like two hours i have all the pids from mr steely's video that i put on here and the stuff and made sure all the motors were where i got to the point where i wanted to make sure all the motors were spinning in the right direction and i could not figure out how to turn the motors on i turned my controller on Crossfire was on, it was connected, um, and I would just hit the throttle stick and the motors wouldn't spin. And I was just confused on why that was happening, so I had to research and figure it out for like two hours. The first like 45 minutes, hour-ish, I was trying to figure out how to do it myself and I said, screw it. I searched for a while and finally found like a form that, or the um, manual to tell me what to do on here to set that. And um, yeah, if you run into that issue, maybe I'll include that link in the bottom. So if you're a newbie and getting into this, this is very overwhelming and I can understand that if you're new, it'll just be a lot for your brain because it was a lot for me. So this switch right here I set for the motor switch. So for idle, and then I'm just gonna give it a, like a little bit of throttle All right, everything seems to be working the way it should. Um, that is spinning left, that is spinning left. 
That is spinning right. That is spinning right. Money. You can kill it. And, um... Yeah, let's continue watching the video. I'm sure he's just going to put the props on and I think he flies it in the garage. I don't know if I should do that. Let's do it. So I'm going to basically set my... You're supposed to alternate. So once diagonally, one prop supposed to be the same and diagonally the other way, the props are um, different. Um, that's how all drones are. That's how they all work. So I'm just seeing how he orientates them. It probably doesn't matter as long as you have that diagonal idea in mind. These are the same and these are the same, but I'm not 100% positive. So I'm just gonna make sure I do this. Maybe I'll test it one day and flip them and see if it changes. Uh, but as long as you keep the props the same in a di diagonal direction, it's like these two are the same and these two are the same, you should you should be fine. I, th I would I would think. Because I can kind of see a little bit on how these props look. And that one would go there. That definitely doesn't look the same. So I'll probably use this pink one for the diagonal of that. Yep. Seems right. That watermelon style, dude. Colors are sick. I really like this, like his whole color scheme and setup and stuff. It's super dope. Super dope. So, anyways. Of course, my overhead camera died while I was doing this. Sorry. Um, I will show you what I did just in case. So there's no, there's some, I don't know why I just can't charge all my batteries like I should <laughs> when I'm not in here. So I have a whole charging station right here. So I don't know why I just can't do that. But um, when we're all said and done, anything that I missed, I will cover. Um, yeah. This is what it looks like. Basically what we did for the last portion that we've been ch chatting about when the camera turned off up top was we put this top on, put on to the standoffs for the camera and stuff and made it all complete. And then we put the battery straps on. So this is the GoPro facing forward and the run cam facing forward or facing up. And on this side, you, I fished the strap through with the clip on the left. So this side. And then on this side, I alternated that strap. So the clip was on the right. So, um, and then the battery, when you put it in, you make it tight on top here and make sure it's not pushing or digging into those screws that are on the top. And then um, with this front strap, you strap it through the clip and then you bend back the power cord and strap over that. So on this side here, um, everything's clean and it's not loose and wiggling around and vibrating or getting in the way of the props. Everything is set up really well um, yeah now we're putting on the props so let's do it I need to find a strap sorry there's no overhead rig right now but currently I'm just putting the nuts on to the quad. Um, yeah, I'm just tightening each of the props down. It'd be nice to have one of these out in the, while I'm flying and stuff too. I just need to make a whole like kit to carry around with me. 
So I'm not taking tools from my garage and then losing them. Because that's the type of dude I am. I lose stuff. So I'm just getting these pretty tight, like I'm tightening them completely down and then kind of muscling it a little bit. Not crazy, I don't want to strip them though. But that looks like a complete drone. I am so stoked, so pumped. I want to make sure everything's good on here with this video. I get it. I probably need to set a fail safe. RX Nano, this is what he said to go to on the crossfire. Check the motors again. They're spinning the right way. I'm going to set it down here and we will record where this tripod is at. save this for outside and I'll kind of rip it around there. I don't know why, I don't know if it's like the wind in this area causing it to move left like that. It's only moving left though, so I don't understand that. Like that back motor there, 
It might be a weight issue, to be completely honest. Maybe the GoPro on there would help. It's like a little bouncer, dude. All right, we'll kill it. We'll actually try it and we'll shoot a little video, I guess, once I get the strap or figure out a way to put the GoPro on there temporarily and we'll just rip it around a little feel. Hopefully I don't lose the GoPro because that would be sad. So, uh, yeah, let's do it. Jacked!